What's up you guys? I'm Natasha. This is Shepherding Prepper's Farm and it is time for another weekly garden tour. And today we have Kakuzi squash to harvest. This is a monster Kakuzi squash. Kakuzi? Startled me. Jeez Louise. Did you not know that's coming? I mean I did, but I didn't expect you to like <laughs> yell Kakuzi at me. Oh my goodness. But yes, as you can see. Seth and the Kakuzi. It gives you a, a pretty proportional size difference here. Yeah, almost like a little baseball bat. So typically Kakuzi is harvested when it is between 18 to 24 inches. You want to harvest it while it is young and tender if you're going to use it as a replacement for zucchini, which is what we essentially do and all the meals that you would use zucchini in, you can use Kakuzi squash in while it is young. When it gets substantially larger than that, 36 inches or above, you're probably going to want to start allowing it to go to its original purpose, which is a gourd, saving it in that manner. This is a little bit longer than ideal but the flesh is still pretty soft so we can still go ahead and use this as zucchini chips we can use it as squash flour all sorts of purposes for zucchini so this is a beautiful thing so if you haven't tried growing kakuzi squash i'm a big fan of this especially if you suffer from vine borers we get that the duck spotted set um, we get vine borers really, really bad here in the south. They destroyed a whole stash of our squash recently. The Kakuzi squash has been left untouched, so it's an excellent replacement squash. If you are looking for varieties to grow in the south, that will keep the vine borers away. Now, as you can see, as we work the rest of the way down this bed, we have lots and lots of tomatoes that are ripe and ripening. So right here, these beautiful fruits. This is a ponderosa tomato. You can see it has a slight ruffling to it, but it's not extreme. These get to a, a pink green sort of color. That's a very large size aroma that Seth is holding right there. This monstrosity right back here, this is a beefsteak tomato, huge. And then these giants right here, these are terracotta tomatoes that you're seeing. Really, really big, nice size. Now I'm sure you're noticing the blight that has started to affect the tomatoes. So as you can see, we have blight on our tomatoes. It is something that we are prepared for here because we get blight on our tomatoes every year. We've had thunderstorms for the past, what, week in a row? There's yeah, been a almost every day for about five days straight. Yeah, every day, it's been constant. So because of that, of heat, rain, humidity, it has highly affected the plants, so we have blight. Now what we've done to prepare for this is while these tomatoes were healthy, I came through and I clipped suckers off of them. I put them in the house in glass jars and they are producing roots. So in a week or two, I'll take these diseased plants out after they're done ripening their fruits or producing their fruits and I will replace them with healthy tomatoes that are already 12 to 18 inches. So I'll get a second wave of tomatoes in the garden. It's our way of succession sowing our tomatoes to prolong our harvest and combat the blight. over here you can see that we have white zinnias that are blooming and looking really really lovely this little batch right in front of me these are craig's grande jalapenos you can see all the rain finally gave these the boost of nitrogen that they needed they are much taller i didn't actually have to fertilize these and we have our first jalapeno of the year which is kind of hilarious exactly because last year we had loads and loads and loads of jalapenos and now this year it's pretty much the last hot pepper we have to come in which is quite funny yeah, we've had some spicy ones already. Oh my gosh, yeah, the serranos, the cayennes, the hot wax peppers, all of, all it. of it. So good. If we come past the Craig's Grande Jalapenos, we move down just a little bit further. This next little batch, these are Big Jim peppers. And then right through here, these are Rainforest Chili Peppers. This is another batch of our hot paprikas right in through here. Now, as you can see, this is the back of the Kakuzi area. We do have a lovely Charleston Gray watermelon that is growing right over here. This was a volunteer. If you come around to the back side of this bed, the ground cherries have started producing. This is another lantern type fruit. Ground cherries are a lot like tomatillos. They obviously have little paper lanterns. These are really, really good if they are fully ripe. 
they just are not sweet or super tasty. Some people say that they are toxic if you eat them before they have totally turned into their beautiful golden coloring. However, if you do grow these, they make exceptional jam. Sophia loves these, she eats them like fresh berries. We just have to wait for them to turn brown and dry out first. Now over here, and on this side, this guy right here is ready. These beautiful plants. This right here is Ramphicante squash. Now this is roughly the same as the Kakuzi squash in a sense that you wanna harvest it when it's between 12 to 24 inches. That's pretty much the ideal. You can do a little bit under that. You just wanna make sure you harvest it while the skin is still green. This is also a really great squash to grow. If you have issues with vine borers, vine borers, like I mentioned earlier, took out some of our squash. These are producing super well and hanging in there and they taste awesome. They have a very nutty flavor that traditional zucchini doesn't have. So these are actually really, really tasty. Plus, how fun is that? All right, over here on this trellis, we have lots of different tomatoes. You can see our tiny spoon tomatoes are just and strong as ever. I'm even dropping some fruit because I didn't get to it quite quick enough. I was extremely surprised at how prolific the tiny spoon tomatoes were. I mean, I was not expecting that. I grew these thinking this was kind of going to be a dwarf variety of tomato. Obviously, it's our first year growing spoon tomatoes. They were a free seed packet from Baker Creek. I don't typically grow small things because we have such a big family that I don't I need big food, I have a big family to feed. So I don't typically grow, you know, many peppers very often. I do have some that we save from the grocery store, but I don't grow small things. And this we grew on a whim. I wasn't actually gonna plant any, but my daughter Layla, she is a tomato enthusiast. She was like, mom, you have to plant it, you have to grow it. And I did, and these are amazingly prolific. Like, do you see? This is all tomato. <laughs> There's some massive tomatoes and fruits on this side of the trellis, but I'm gonna finish with this side first. <laughs> so you can see another smaller batch of peppers right in through here. This is one of my favorite sections in the garden because these are hot peppers and I love hot peppers. So right in through here, we have some Hungarian hot wax peppers. These little tykes right in through here, these are baby poblanos. We have some hot paprika plants right in through here. These are my beloved Sugar Rush peach peppers. These are my favorite. As you can see, this one also points up to the sky sometimes. Not always, as you can see, this one's pointing down. These are my favorite. Sugar Rush peach peppers, and my love for them is so pure. They're so good. Now, when you let these ripen fully, they are as hot as a habanero. So they're really, really spicy. But when they're young. Ooh, that's hot. I was not prepared, but typically when sugar rush peach peppers are about this size and they're not super poofy and dark in color, it's a good thing I like heat. Because that's hot. Um, when they're not as. Okay, anyways. They don't typically get that spicy when they're this size, but I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that. These make the best hot sauce in the entire world. It is so good. Now, if I find a hot sauce recipe that I like better, I'll share it with you. But this year, for sure, I'm gonna make a hot sauce video on making hot sauce with the Sugar Rush Peach Pepper because it is absolutely delectable. It is a pepper that is hot and spicy and has a super sweet peach taste that comes in with it. It's amazing. It's absolutely phenomenal. And I was predicting for several weeks what I thought this was gonna be. I can tell by the leaves, they're my favorite, so they stand out to me quite a bit. These right here are our serrano peppers. And then this plant right behind the serranos, this is a detail pepper. These are also details right here. These will ripen to a really beautiful orange color. These are also very, very spicy. The back of the seed packet said they have a habanero-like heat. This is another Sugar Rush peach pepper. Right here we have some spicy bananas. Quite a bit of these are ready to be pulled, so we're gonna harvest several of these in a minute. 
these right here are spicy paprikas again another sugar rush peach pepper poblanos spicy bananas poblanos our gorgeous cayennes and look they're starting to ripen and then you have more serranos in through here these in the back these right here these are big gems these need to get substantially large for these to have any real heat to it when they're small they don't really have any heat at all but that's what those are my Schwarzenbeerenberry is littered and I mean littered I don't know if you can see them all flying off with leaf footed bugs I mean look like it's ridiculous they're everywhere but I will say in spite of that these are absolutely loaded down with fruit there is tons of black fruit in here that we need to harvest probably enough to make some jam with it at this point because there's just so much of it really happy about how well these have been producing and the truth is if you struggle with leaf footed bugs in your garden because what they do they're a lot like stink bugs they poke holes into your your fruit so if you have a tomato that has a lot of spots in it i'm sure i can find one or beans like green beans have spots in them they're typically from leaf footed bugs or stink bugs poking a hole into it and sucking juice out of it they're awful if you are not a big fan of these berries, you could potentially grow this plant as a sacrifice plant and let the leaf-footed bugs have it as a distraction from your other crops because they are all over it. And through here we have several ripe Roma tomatoes. These are our absolutely gorgeous orange accordions with the ribbing, you can see them, they're just beautiful. So this right here is more of an orange coloring that you would expect to see on a orange accordion. But when they ripen, ripen, I'm yet to see one that is not just a beautiful red color. So I'm not sure exactly what the deal is with that, but whatever. Either way, they're really fantastic. And you can see lots more Romas down and through here. Lots more Romas down and through here. The basil has been loving its life with all the rain. This is Thai basil. Our beef steaks are so monstrous. These are huge, 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 huge. This is Genovese basil. And you can just see loads and loads of fruit. Now this basil is starting to flower and go to seed. What you can do if this starts to happen is you can come through and pluck the flowers off and it will help prolong your basil harvest a little bit. Basil definitely has a flavor difference when it is starting to flower. So you really want to make sure you stay on top of harvesting your basil frequently because the more frequently you harvest it, the more that plant is going to push out and the less likely it is going to be to flower. Down and through here, these are probably our youngest tomatoes. You can see these haven't got a ton of height on them. We do have some melons at the base that are starting to grow and do pretty nicely. Again, more romas. We planted a lot of romas in here on purpose this year because we intend on making a lot of sauce. This is another spoon tomato right through here. You can see lots of fruit right there. So the garlic in the back right there, this all needs to be harvested because that is very done, very, very ready. These right here are Armenian yard long cucumbers. This is my California red zinnia. This is my favorite zinnia, at least one of them from last year. I love the reds, truly love those. They're beautiful. And you can see we have several ripe cucumbers that we need to harvest. These are Bates Alpha cucumbers. These are my favorite, or at least one of them. You can see they can get pretty massive. Part of what I am looking for when I'm constantly trying new varieties in the garden is things that are going to stand up to blight, fungus, powdery mildew, disease, pests, insects, and heat. So you constantly are in the search, it seems like as a gardener, to find crops that grow really well for your area. So if you find plants that have been known to grow in your area or grow in an area that has a very similar climate to where you're at, you'll often find that that fruit is gonna grow better for you. So baked alpha cucumbers are exceptional. I really, really dislike a bitter cucumber. They, they just ruin it for me. I don't want a bitter cucumber. I don't enjoy that. So. I always look for varieties of cucumbers that produce well, stand up to disease resistance, and are not bitter. These are one of them. 
Now down in through here we have a few different sweet peppers that are growing. Those look really good. And we have more melons planted at the base of our tomatoes. You can see we have black beauty tomatoes in through here. Um, some more mar globes right there. This is a terracotta. You can tell because of the coloring on it. These right here are our black strawberry tomatoes. These have been really, really prolific and really healthy in the garden. These are really cute, like these. Now in the beans, okay, this bean section has started to be kind of plagued with insect damage. You're gonna see it right here, and I don't love, and you see this, all these little black spots right here on the beans. All of this all of this is bug damage that you're seeing right through here. We do eat a lot of green beans during this time of year. We also can a lot of green beans. And when the pest pressure gets really heavy like this with our green beans, typically I let it go to seed. I accept that the bugs are kind of destroying it a little bit. It doesn't make me happy, but if I allow these to be saved for seeds, then I won't have to buy those varieties next year, which means I don't have to spend money on it and I don't have to worry about the fact that the bugs are currently destroying those green beans. My intention was to put up some more cans of green beans with what we have growing in this bed, but it's all getting ruined and you don't want to preserve green beans that have a lot of pest damage like that. So right in through here, these are Royal Burgundy bush beans. These are Contender bush beans. And then down in through here, these are golden wax bush beans right through here. You can see they have this nice yellow color. I will say the golden wax stood up a little bit better to the pest damage, not a ton. And then in through here, these are the dragon tongue bush beans and these are the tongues of fire bush beans right here. So all of these are in the process of being allowed to be saved for seeds for this next growing season. Or in truth, possibly we could even go ahead and do a second wave of beans in the fall when the pest pressure lightens up a little bit, which is what we could use those seeds for as well. So those ones right there are Kajari melons, and then these are our Sharon Tease melons. And if we come down, these are the Hara Madu melons right here. These, I believe, are our tiger melons right here, and then these are our Pepino melons that are finally starting to grow, which is really exciting. Now over here, these little peppers that are kind of, I don't know, like short bell peppers, these are Atuta peppers. These ripen to a beautiful orange color and they're very, very sweet and almost citrusy when they're orange. These are lovely, I'm really excited about these. And you can see they look like a bell pepper that's just kind of snubby. Now over here we have some mini baby bells. These were saved from seeds from a grocery store, miniature bell pepper. And over here we have some Cubanelli peppers more Atudas. And these all just look awesome. You can see that there are some weeds that are sprinkled in through here, but that's okay, that's pretty normal. Now over on this side, these are, I think they're Chicordi peppers. I don't know, I know I'm butchering it. These ripen to a beautiful red color. You can see these get quite large. I'm really excited. This is a variety of sweet pepper that I've been really looking forward to trying. Some of them even get a little curly on the bottom, which I think is just super cute. Now I have a tendency to harp on this throughout the growing season, the idea that the more you pick your pepper plants, the more they're gonna produce for you, the bigger they're gonna get, the bigger your peppers are gonna get. It's really important if you're growing peppers and you wanna produce them on a large scale to heed that advice. However, with certain varieties of peppers, you want to let them ripen. For example, these peppers are supposed to be super, super, super good when they're sweet. So I need a couple of them to ripen. So I'm gonna go through and pick a few of these off of the plant to harvest as green peppers, but I'm going to leave several on there to ripen and turn red. I do this also with our cayennes because cayennes I primarily use for hot sauce making, for making a homemade frank sauce. Everything else though is pretty much you pick it while it's young and you let it get nice and big after the plant has gotten big. 
So this is another really good example of an Atuta pepper. You can see it's got that bell pepper shape. It's nice and dark, but it's really stubby like that. And these are Black Beauty bell peppers. You can see these are a really dark purple variety of pepper. It's exciting. These right here are Italian pepperoncinis. We came through and harvested tons and tons and tons of pepperoncinis off of these plants just like three days ago. And you can see the fruit really came in strong after we did that. So those look great. And these are our Hungarian hot wax peppers. I don't know if you can tell how massively loaded down these plants are with fruit, but there's two of them, this one and this one, and these are both Hungarian hot waxes. I can't pick these fast enough. We have been harvesting these. I'm planning on canning and pickling some of them so we can eat them as hot peppers on our pizza throughout the winter because that is exceptionally delicious. And then over here we have some Pippin's Golden Honey Peppers that are coming in. These are our Blauhild beans. We are at this point letting these go to seed. So this sunflower right here is about to come inside because you can see the massive amount of leaf-footed bugs that are on it. I actually saw this thing online where somebody brought out a mini vacuum, like a little mini handheld one, and used them to suck up the bugs off their plants. I'm going to get a mini vacuum and I'm going to test the theory out because there's no way I can get all of those bugs by hand. There's way too many. And at this point, if I let them run amok, they'll just continue to reproduce and they are not responding to neem and BT. So we have to do something about those. So mini vacuum it is, I will let you know how that works out. Now over here, I was really hoping that one of them would have bloomed. However, this is my passion vine, my may pot, my passion flower. And we had our first passion flower bloom the other day. I didn't get it, I didn't get it on camera, unfortunately. I thought there was a bug on me. But it was so beautiful. So hopefully I can get one of these on camera and show you because it was amazing. So may pop is actually perennial in our area. So eventually what will happen is this trellis will just get taken over year after year with the may pop and I won't have to do anything with it. It's very prolific. So I'm going to give this over to the may pop. It does produce an edible fruit. So that's really exciting. So over here, these are the Punanira cucumbers. So you can see these cucumbers right here. And they're a nice orange and yellow color. That is because we are letting these ripen on the vine on purpose so we can save seeds for these. So these are almost ready. And then these are my Lysanthius roses. That's my first little bloom. It might not be super exciting for you guys, but I'm really excited about this. My first little buds on the Lysanthius roses. These are perennial in our growing zone. I'm super excited about those. Now over here, these beautiful trellises, these are covered with blue lake pole beans. And these are starting to produce beans for us. But I'm gonna have to really stay on top of these because you can already see that there's bug damage on these. Now this right here is our mustard that we've been growing and saving for seed. This is completely ready to be harvested. It's all brown, it's all dried out. So we're gonna have to do this probably tomorrow. I won't have time this evening. And then all throughout here, these are dragon tongue bush beans. We should be able to harvest these beans and start eating on these very, very soon. They do get quite tall, as you can see. This is a good height for beans. Now these cucumbers are the Tokyo green cucumbers. These have not been bitter for me once so far, knock on wood, and I've really enjoyed this variety. This has been really good. Since we've seen a large portion of the kitchen garden, I actually wanna go check out a couple of things in the perennial garden. That's actually more of a kitchen garden thing. Number one, I wanna show you guys the corn and there's a couple of zucchinis over there that I know that are ready and probably the world's largest scallop squash. So, so scallop squash is typically harvested when it's pretty small, patty pans, that's what we're looking at. This monster is actually ready to be harvested for seed. And when it's ready to be harvested for seed, this is what it will look like. It will be the size of a small pumpkin. It will be orange in color, depending on the variety, and super heavy. So, there you go. And then right here, this is a gray zucchini that is ready. That looks really nice. Oh, pickle worms. 
Ugh. Let's check out this amazing corn. Look at this, y'all. I mean, this looks so good. I am so excited about the corn. So these are getting to be really nice in size. You can actually feel kernels when you feel the corn in through here. And as you can see, it's starting to die back on the top, the tassels are. So we have just a little bit longer on this corn, but overall, it looks amazing. No joke, we're gonna get some corn this year. I'm really excited about that. I am thrilled. All right, y'all, so with my giant patty pan, I'm going to bid you adieu. This will conclude the garden tour for this evening. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with all of us because we enjoyed spending the evening with you as well. I'm gonna go fill up a bathtub with water and put all of this food inside of it to wash it because there is no way it will fit in my sink and it's 7.30 at night and time to put the kids to bed. So, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, y'all. Come me in the shot. Yeah. Come here. Say bye. Bye. Mm. Bye. Mama. Well,